Made the hammer go crushing my heart to pieces Never hold it, just leave it Resurrect and believe it, just receive it He could do a better job than you can make it You can fake it, flip, twist and mold it But you're still holding it And if I knew I didn't have to force my future Baby, I would've been sleeping in Hey, I did my best and God did the rest Believe I did my best and God did the rest Receive I said we did our best and God did the rest It's not me What's up, SCY? Justin Knowles here. Hey, I want to just get a vibe of everybody in the room. Okay, if you could participate, raise your hand if this applies to you. Raise your hand if you uh, sometimes can be stubborn, meaning you don't let other people help you on very like basic things. Me, just see, take a look around. You're not alone. We're all there. All of us tend to be stubborn. Like I remember, in like just just even like little things. Like I remember, I used to work at a restaurant, and I would pride myself that I would be able to carry baskets of, like, as many baskets of food, more baskets of food on my arm. Like, I would, like, hold one in this hand, and I would stack up, like, four baskets of food on my, on my left arm, and I would carry it out to the table like a man, right? And I'm just like, yeah, look at me. And I would, like, go, and I would pass out all the food at just, like, one table, one trip, just like, you know, when I go home and I carry the grocery bags, it's all the grocery bags at one time. I'm not making two trips, right? And so I remember this one time, it was a pretty big table and I was trying to get all the, the, the baskets on my arm and, and the, there's another server there that was, uh, said, hey, let me help you, that's too many. I said, no, 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 I got this, okay? I got this, all on my own. And so I'm out there and I did pretty good. I was out there, I walked all the way through people, navigating through the different tables, and I finally get to the table, I hand off the first one, I'm like, okay, we're good to go. I hand off the second one, I still have three baskets of food left on my arm, and then all of a sudden I just, I start to feel the unbalance and the, and the, and the, the wobbliness, and within like, what felt like a thousand minutes, in two seconds, the rest of the food literally falls off my arm and makes a big crash on the floor, uh, plates broken, silverware bouncing everywhere. And these were, this is a group of old ladies, okay? So they're like Sunday's best, brooches, hair all done up nice, you know? And there's a, a, a little container of ranch that hit the perfect angle at the very bottom. And literally, I don't know how this is physically possible, but ranch shot immediately up to the ceiling and got on the ceiling, started dripping down, got all over these ladies, Sunday's best. I thought I killed one of them because one of them went like, <gasps> and I like turned around and kind of like fell back. And it was just an absolute mess. All because I decided that I could do this on my own. All because I didn't need any help. I could, I could handle this on my own. And as, as dumb as that story is, I think that there's a lot of us in our rooms listening and whoever's listening to this message is that this is somehow how sometimes you feel that you are managing your life that you are carrying way too much you're holding it all in there's people around you to help you that all we have to do is ask for that help yet for some reason pride gets in the way and we just say no no I, I don't want to do this I don't need anyone's help. And I feel like some of us, we're just kind of trying to balance things all on our own. And what ends up happening is the big crash, the big mess. Things get way worse because we tend to try to do things um, on our own. And I don't know about you, but maybe you've heard this. Maybe it's in the Christian circle a little bit, or maybe someone outside. Like, you, like when things start to get a little crazy and you're overwhelmed and you're filled with anxiety, that there's this, oh, this famous like saying like, oh, God will never give you more than you could handle, right? Oh, like God, will, God will never give you more than you could ever handle. And, and, and guess what? That's not true. That in reality, that's not true. Scripture, the Bible actually doesn't, doesn't ever say that. Actually, if you were to read through the Gospels, read through any of the stories of the, the characters in the Bible, it seemed that every single one of every character that we read in Scripture had way more than they could handle. That's just the, that's just the reality. And maybe you, you found it, maybe you find that helpful, maybe you, you, we believe some of that lie that God will never give us more than we can handle because it makes us feel better about ourselves or whatever. But actually, it actually stems from a, a, a verse taken a little bit out of context. It's 1 Corinthians 10, 13. It says that the temptations of your life are no different from what others experience and that God is faithful, that he will not allow the temptation to be more than you could stand. Okay, so you can kind of see where, where we get that, that when you are tempted, he will show you a way out so 
that you could endure. And he said that he'll, he'll not let you be tempted beyond what you could handle, but he will always provide a way out. See, scripture actually never says, like I said, that you, he will give you more than you can handle. Because life, in reality, a lot of times for me, if I'm being honest with you, it feels a lot more than I could handle. And, I, and it kind of leaves me just kind of taking a survey of, like, okay, God, where are you at? God, I, I'm full of anxiety. There's, there's a lot of plates spinning. I'm holding a lot of baskets of food of life, right? And I, and I kind of don't know what to do. And I, maybe you feel like you have crashed or you're about to let, literally let everything go. And so the question for is, is when it comes, when we feel these, these emotions, when we feel like life is too much, what do we do? Why would God allow us to have more than we can handle? And I think the first response, the first truth I would like to challenge you, if that's what you're feeling, the first response, if you're taking notes, is this, that I believe that there's times that he wants to teach us to depend on his presence. He wants us to, to depend on his presence, that he wants to, to teach us that he is there in the midst of the crazy, in the midst of the anxiety, in the midst of the stress, that he is present. That how many of you have noticed that w- when things go really, really well, it's really easy to forget about God? When things are going well in our life, it's really easy uh, to, to not thank God for the great things or to, to not like, acknowledge or, that he's present and, and, and existent in our lives on a daily basis because it's kind of like, yeah, we're good. I'm just kind of doing my thing over here. God, you know, things are great, and I'm just kind of doing my thing because nothing is really bringing my attention to my faith. Nothing's really bringing my attention to God. Yeah, I know you're still there and everything. That's great. Things seem to be working, but my gosh, I, I, I'm just rolling. We kind of forget about his presence when things happen and they're, and they're really, really good. But my gosh, when things go bad, when things start to get filled, when I start to get filled with anxiety, when things around me starts to seem like it's falling apart, we automatically, the first thing is, God, I need you. Where are you? I need you and where are you? See, I was flying back from Tennessee this week and uh, I was sitting next to this really chatty Kathy lady. Like when I'm on a plane, I don't want to talk to anybody. I have my headphones on. And, 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 but she's like talking with me, like all kind of friendly. And then she was asking what I was doing. I was like, well, actually, I'm a, you know, I was speaking at a, at a youth conference for all these different churches and her immediate like demeanor changed. She went like, oh. And I was like, okay. And she's like, and she's like, just directly like this. She goes, I don't believe that there's a God. And I don't want you to talk to me about it. Like, that's serious. And I was like, all right, I'll put my headphones back on, right? And so, you know, and, and so we're going through the plane. And on, on, on the way back, when I say, like, turbulence, that's, like, generous. Like, this is the biggest turbulence that I've ever experienced in my entire life. Like, this is, like, rededicate my life to Jesus turbulence just to make sure. Like, and I'm, like, holding on, you know, to the, to the, to the, uh, the armrest, and I'm trying to fight this lady with the armrest. Like, let me hold on to it. No, not you, me. And we're just going back and forth, and, and I'm just, I have the headphones on, and in the middle of this turbulence, all of a sudden I feel this tapping on my shoulder, and this same lady um, that just said that she didn't want to talk to me about the things because, she, you know, that I believe in God and that, that she doesn't. She goes, um, um, I, can you pray for us? And I was like, I thought you didn't believe in a God. I'm, I'm just kidding. I didn't say that. I was like, absolutely. Like, absolutely I would. But it's just funny because like she was so direct with me and she's like, hey, I want to make sure that you know this. But when things got crazy, things got rough, guess what she was doing? She, she was praying. Because it's not, in, usually it's not until things get so bad until we realize that God is fully present. And it's amazing when life gets difficult how easy it is to be drawn to the presence of God. So now why would God allow us to be to go through certain things or allow us to experience certain things or allow us to have more than what we feel that we could handle. I think one of those reasons is because he wants to to teach us to depend on his presence, not when just things are bad, but when things are good also. In all areas that God is with us and that he is for us. And if you know this story, um, if you've been around church, you've heard of the story of Jonah. Um, and basically God said, hey, you're going to go teach to the Ninevites. And he's like, absolutely not. I hate them. I'm not going to go. And he goes the opposite way. And if a whole bunch of different circumstances happen. He gets thrown off his boat um, and then gets swallowed by this big uh, fish. And then here's what happens. He's in like, obviously, you're having a pretty bad day if you get swallowed up by something, right? And so he's deep in the belly of this, of this fish. And in Jonah 2, verse 2, it says this. He said, I cried out to the Lord in my great, what? 
Say it out with me if you're reading along. In my great trouble. Not in my great, great time. Not in my best times. I called out to the Lord in my great trouble and he answered me. There's no pause in between there. It's just, I called out to God in my great trouble and he answered me. I called out, he answered me. I called to you from the land of the dead, Lord, and you heard me. As my life was slipping away, re uh, remember the Lord, and my earnest prayer went out to you in your holy temple. See, notice that Jonah didn't say that in my success I called on the Lord. In my good times I called on the Lord. In my distress, in my trouble I called on the Lord. And so here's a challenge for some people that it's, it's that when they get into the middle of the storm, when they feel like life is too, like their life starts getting full of, of anxiety and stress and, and the troubles that have come along with it, like we're not able to balance the things that, that our life has, has given us. Um, it, it, life isn't going the way that we shot, uh, thought, thought, thought that it should, that I wish that it wasn't happening. Why is this happening? All the questions that come along with trouble in our own life, that if God was with, with me or for me, this would not be happening. Why is, why doesn't God hear me? God, I'm doubting my faith. I, I don't know if, I, if you're real anymore because all of these things that are going on in my life that's given me stress, right? That if God were powerful, this wouldn't be, like all of these questions, these are all things that I've thought through and maybe you've thought as well. And I think that if I could help maybe encourage you and help us remind today is this, is that never let the presence of a storm cause you to doubt the presence of God. Never let the presence of a storm have you doubt the presence of God because every now and then the winds are going to blow. It's going to get crazy. Life's going to come at you hard. But that doesn't mean that God's not in it. It doesn't mean that God's not near. And for us, that should bring us peace. Just knowing that he is present and with us. When my, when my uh, little boys, they have a nightmare, the first thing that they do is run to their dad and they come, they come to my side of the bed because they just want their dad present. When we look at life, when life gets crazy, who do you run to? Which way do you run? Because if my kids know that they could run to their dad, we as, as humans, we could run to our Heavenly Father because he's present. And sometimes God wants to help us, teach us that we need to depend on his presence. In Psalm 55, 22, it says, cast your fears on the Lord and he will sustain you. Give it to the Lord and he will, he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. Life might be shaky, but he will never let you be shaken when you depend on his presence. See, another, another way that as we kind of wrap up, and I, I want to make sure that we hit on this too, is because I think God allows us to uh, experience more than we can handle and experience some of the things that we do is because he wants to teach us to experience his power. He wants us to experience his power, that, that to help experience his supernatural power that comes through the Holy Spirit when we call on him, that you were created to need God, to be desperate for him. And then when you recognize that he didn't expect you to handle everything on your own to experience it. You don't have to do it by yourself. He, he says to the Apostle Paul, um, he, he lived this out um, in, in, in 2 Corinthians. Listen to what Paul's saying to God. Maybe you feel like Paul, that you're like, God, why have you given me this? Look at, this is what Paul says as he's riding, going through, writing this in prison. He says, three different times I begged to the Lord to take it away. We don't know what it is. Just it. What is your it? What are you begging God? God, take this away. Each time he said, my grace is all that you need. My power works best in what? Weakness. So now I'm glad to boast about my weakness so that power, the power of Christ can work through. And that's why I take pleasure in my weakness and in the insults and the hardships and the persecutions and the troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. See, it's, uh, it reminds me again, I, I go back to my boys. Wade, he's my littlest, he's three. 
I have these 25 pound dumbbells that I keep in, in, our, you know, in our living room. My wife and I like, do like home workouts and stuff like that. And it's so funny because he thinks that he can lift up the 25 pound dumbbell. Like he tries so hard. That's all he wants to do is just move this dumbbell. And it's really funny because he's like, he's trying, all, all of his might, his face is turning red. He's like shaking, like trying to get it all up there. And I'm like, buddy, let, let me help you move it. And he goes, no, dada, I do it. No, dad, I'm going to do it. And I'm just like, dude, so, like, son, let me, let me help you. And I can't imagine that, like, that God is looking down at us sometimes and just kind of asking the same thing. And we're just like, no, dad, I got this. No, dad, I don't need you. And God's just going, man, let's, let me help you. Like, give, like, give it to me. I, I could carry it with one hand. I could carry the dumbbell over to where you want it to go really easily, more than you. Same with God. He could take it. He wants you to experience his power. And, and for, some, for some reason, we, we, we reject it. Or we relate to the party on it. Because I think that when Paul's talking about this, whatever that thing is, maybe you, you have a thing. You, you have a thing that you're like, God, I want this to be, I, I, this is giving me stress. This is giving me anxiety. God, this is, this is hurting me or whatever it is. That usually it's, it's in our weakness is, is when we're actually most strong because it, it's God is teaching us to experience his power. He's teaching us to depend on his presence. Because for when I am weak, he is strong. So what can you do when you're feeling overwhelmed in your life? What do you do when you have that thing that you can't get rid of? That you can find peace when you depend on his presence and when you experience his supernatural power working in you and through you. Because the truth is, you don't have to do it by yourself. And the, the truth is also, so many of you are trying to do it by yourself. So who do you run to? Give it to God. And maybe this could be your prayer. Let's just pray all together. Close your eyes. This, this could be your prayer. God, help me experience your presence in the storm. God, help me experience your power in this life. I no longer want to do this alone. I need you. Amen. Love you, SEY.